Hey guys, and welcome to another scheduled maintenance announcement. Uh, this one I've been kind of looking forward to it because there has been a few things that kind of called my attention a little bit. I have already read this, so to not buy too much time of you guys, I will kind of try to sum it up everything that uh, is currently in here and try to give my opinions at the end of the video if you're interested. And without further ado, we're going to start with new chaser pass. Nothing much to talk about the new chaser pass other than they are changing the rewards here. As we can see we now have a new motion called the space float. We're gonna have a Cordy of Twinkle Tinkle Shooting Star and the Space Rabbit Cordy. I don't know why what's up with the space team they're going on over here but they do show it in action here and it's like it's glorious. You just that I, I don't even need to say anything just it just do it on its own. Yeah, you can see here a little better that their new uh, equipment here that it's a helmet and I think this one is like a back effect that they have on the characters. So not too much has been changing there except for that. However, the one thing that has been changed a lot recently is the Halloween event. As you can see here, we have the change of backgrounds from some areas, including the lobby. We got the attendance log as we always do. Not a lot has changed. When it comes to rewards wise, there are a few reinforcement scrolls here that we can get, some tickets, uh, some property scrolls that we can also get. But we also, as because it's Halloween and everything, we're also going to get this Halloween box over here at day 15, which grant us a Halloween access select box and a jack o lantern monster card. When it comes to the accessory box, we can get two types of accessories. One of them is the headband, which is a reoccurring item that we can get, and a new witch hat cordy box, which is basically just a witch hat. Will fit very well for my army and possibly a witch costume that I can pull off for her if possible. Next one, we got a reoccurring event, which is the lantern event, which is basically we have to go to a level that is around our level gap and basically find the jack-o-lantern and defeat it seven times. We get five uh, pumpkin baskets, which is this item right here. And these baskets can contain very good items here. As you can see, it's just an immense list of things you can get. But the most notorious one, obviously, is the single property scrolls, monster card box, region monster card box, and a few other very good items to get. Actually, now that I read that back, this is just the exclusive dungeons that this doesn't appear in. Uh, the rewards are basically just all of this right here, but it's still uh, very good rewards here from the basket. Next, we have the weekly chain mission, which essentially we have to kill at least uh, 600 enemies at the week, and every time we do so, we get a special item in return. For instance, on the first week, we're gonna get a title that is very themed around Halloween. For week two, we're gonna be getting another jack-o'-lantern card. Then lastly, we get the trickster for week three. Next one, we got the accumulated logging event. This one we also is a recurring event as well, where we play the game for a few hours. And this one is uh, two hours and 30 minutes, I think. It's 150 minutes. Where in this event, you basically just get rewards every 30 minutes you play the game. This is accumulative, so you don't need to do like two hours and 30 minutes in a row. Although, um, most of us already do play two hours in a row, so it's not like a big deal. However, when you have 150 minutes accumulated in the game, you'll be able to get a Jekyll Lantern necklace and a few singles property scrolls to help you out. Next one, we have the 7 day login event, which is pretty straight to the point. Every time you log in the game, you will be rewarded with one piece of the Cordy set of Halloween, or as I like to call the Pumpkin Man. I don't know if it's going to be forever, but the way they're like kind of setting this up for every piece a day. It kind of feels like you'll be able to get this one forever. So if you really like this set or you really don't have any other visuals for your character, I do recommend picking this one. So next one, we're gonna have a big one, which is Dungeon Permanent Entry Event. Until November 6th, which is when the next event starts for Grand Chase, Tower Disappearance and Berkus Lair will not have an entry time limit. Whenever you open a the game, they will most likely be open for you to play. The only thing to be noted here is that the daily entry is still counting, so you can only do things like Tower Disappearance three times and Berkus Lair once, and then after it hits 6am on UTC plus zero, it will be reset as normal. But even then, I, it is a good time for you to be able to just go to Tower Disappearance or Berkus Lair and be able to farm for whatever you want. Next one we have the character level growth event, which 
I like to call it the speedrun event, if anything. What this event basically is, is you pick a character that is not level 85, you level them up, all missions related to jobs, dodge, fourth skills, and fourth bar, they are all reduced to be able to do it much faster, and you also get rewards based on every five levels you get for that character. The rewards in itself are also pretty good, it's basically a one good way to help your character boost and get all the true Dragon Iron sets that it needs. If you have a character that is like not level 85, or you still don't even have Berkus for that character, this event is actually a good helper to at least get some parts faster. We have a new Cordy set because of Halloween, which is the Lunar Knight Hunter Seal. A very cool looking set. I really like this on Azen specifically. It looks very nice on this one. They also introduce and show the attack of the pet. It kind of feels like a homing attack if anything. Like not all the pets does like a diagonal attack as far as I know. So, most likely this is going to be a following projectile, which it would be pretty nice if that's the case. They also introduced the unicorn necklace for the shop that is now a permanent thing you can buy as well. They also have a limited time where you can get one that is already maxed out. You also get a plus 9 Halloween necklace select box if you really just want to buy that instead. All the other Cordys came back as well in the shop. The one from Reki and Cordy, which I personally enjoy this one very much. Also, the jack o lantern set as well that you can buy on the shop, so if you really want to, you're more than welcome to do so. Then we have the package sales, which... So now we're proving to the quality of life improvements, which there's a lot to talk about here, so... We'll just have to go them step by step. The first one that they included is an improved feed pad function, which now instead of having to feed your pad one at a time and being stuck there forever, you're now able to feed your pad all at once. They also added some visuals to indicate whether how much that food in specific is going to fill your pet or if that replenishing rate is now full and you cannot feed the pet anymore. They also allow you now to turn off zoom effects for skills. For those who probably don't know, sometimes when you throw a skill, there was going to be like a cinematic zoom effect to shows your character in the closer and then cast the skills which i would say is a very cool cinematic thing but sometimes depending on where you're fighting it can be very problematic to you because it will be very close to you and you will not be able to see stuff like projectiles or where it's a good place to leave because there's the enemies going to be attacking i never really understood why when i first read it but after i realized that it is kind of a problematic to some people including myself this is a good thing to uh, turn on and off some people might actually don't have a problem with this but some people also like me will kind of have a problem with that. You can also now add titles as favorites by clicking on a star and when you have favorites titles on the screen they will be shown to you first at the top rather than just remaining at the bottom. Now here we're reaching the biggest one and on this list which is the character change in PvP or dungeon waiting rooms. So now you're able to change characters while inside the lobby. So now you don't need to leave the room, change the character, Go back to the room, hope to find the person you were playing with, you just go in the room, change a character, boom, you're now playing with another character. There are some weird things here that I don't quite understand why this happens. For instance, apparently if you're the room leader and you change characters, you lose the room leader. Sounds like you leave the room and then you're able to quickly go back to the room that you were before. And there are obviously some restrictions. For instance, uh, if they don't meet like specific entry, if you don't have the power limits for stuff like maybe the void, if you don't have tickets, or if you're like a character that is not Vegas or Adele and you're trying to enter their level, apparently that's not allowed. The more important one I think is the fact that if you don't change your character in 10 seconds, you get kicked in the room. Also, if you reach a daily limit, apparently you're also kicked out. They also just mentioned Wizard's Labyrinth, but I imagine other areas like Berkus Lair and maybe Temple of Time also apply here. I guess Wizard's Labyrinth was just an example. So yeah, but there are some strange little limitations here that makes you feel like what is happening is you're basically just leaving the room changing the character and then going back to it but now it's a lot more flexible and there's no need to create another room or anything like that you just do everything set up specifically how it says that if there's a password you don't need to type the password again you just get back in so there are some strange things here and there that feels weird but other than that uh, we do have a character select now on waiting rooms which is pretty nice they're expanding the cordy inventory to 900 they also seems to ease the chat filter which I personally think it's a pretty good thing and it's one that we absolutely need it because trying to talk in Grand Chase is like trying to figure out a new language. You cannot even say it last because if you remove the L it says ass and the filter goes oh that guy's saying ass, censor it. You cannot have that but you're trying to say last. They also allow you to move all objects to warehouse function where basically if you have an item on the warehouse you can move all items 
that it's in your character into the warehouse without having to do one at a time. I thought at first it was like if you have an item, they would just put everything in there, which kind of made me a little confused on how that what's going on. But after reading it again, I was I realized like, oh, okay, it's everything that is in the warehouse. It's not every item. <laughs> For instance, if I have here bullions, cores, single property scrolls maybe if you click on that button it would only move these items into the warehouse it's not going to move like every single item they're also changing the criteria for monster cards from rank to card property i tried to look at grand chase about this one but i don't understand what that is but i think it's just a change a name change they're also going to remove non-official background music only another world levels like cryptoria and temple of time have this problem i feel hairier ones as well i remember Back then, you could get like copyright tracks from having certain themes at it, and because these were not obviously Grand Chase music. So it seems like now they're going to remove this, and I don't know if this means they're going to add their own music again, or if they're just going to add Grand Chase music to it. Makes me kind of happy, because uh, we're, it me that means we're going to see, hopefully, some original music now. Another big change they're going to add is they're going to remove level requirement minus three from True Dragon Iron equipment, and they're going to replace it with Tame Resistance. They also improve a skill tree. Basically, what they say here is that if you spend all points on the characters, they will now share a warning that you use all points and you cannot use more in the future. We also got a pet balance for Glenn specifically, which is most likely the pet we're going to see in the future. We, they also included some bug fixes, which mostly, as far as I see here, is just visuals, except for this first one, which they reduced the number of counterattacks by the Chaotic Witch on Connect Explosion. A little helpful, I would say. Chaotic Witch really likes to counter a lot, and sometimes it makes her very immune to attacks for a long time, specifically if we're playing with four people. So making rid this reduction, I feel like is a good call. So that was it for the maintenance schedule. Uh, the real big thing here is the character balancement that they added as well. I'm not going to read through all of this because this is a Bible of a notepad. So I will be leaving this in the description for those who would like to read carefully on their own. Though I will say I did went through Alice's page because she got more buffs than I thought she would. And just reading through these, uh, I can tell that a lot has been changed for most of these characters. Just looking at how Savior, like specifically, can get more attacks in, more hits, more damage, and her tornado, like it's much now faster, it kind of makes me excited to see the other characters. And just reading everything that I see here, uh, most of it is like increased damage and they also change behavior of a lot of skills here i will mention just bravery here for instance which are her fourth skill now you can use skills while it's active they enhance the combo attack allowing for mp recovery so yeah uh, if you want to check this entire character balancement i'll make sure to include that in the description and you're able to read at your own pace really because if i'm going to read this at my own pace here uh this video was going to be like i don't know maybe an hour long and i feel like this video is already long as it is but other than that that was it for the overall update that we're going to be receiving tomorrow very good update if anything you can say that this is the character balancement and then we're getting halloween as an extra which i will say though uh the halloween event that we're going to get as an extra isn't that bad either there is a few cool things here that we can get specifically the single property scrolls for most of these events i would say also the permanent entry thing as well for tower's appearance and backup solar which is pretty nice this does remind me when we had free champion mode available on some events where you could just play events like Vermesha or Archimedia without having to pay for champion tickets. I kind of have a feeling that they're going to do this maybe either again or next update they're going to make a like, okay, there's no time restrictions now, you can be able to play whenever you want. I feel like they're just kind of testing and playing with the water to see how is this going to play out, which frankly I think this is pretty interesting and if it works pretty well, I hope they actually do remove this entry time that they have for it because I feel like places like Berka Slayer and Tower Disappearance don't need that anymore. Uh, it just feels like an annoying restriction that kind of just blocks the event altogether. Berka Slayer nowadays, I feel like endgame related is not that important anymore. It's very easy to get Berka equipment. The only value I can see it being, it's literally just Berka's card, which other than crafting is very hard to get this card. And Tower Disappearance, it's Tower Disappearance. It doesn't matter if you're just starting or if you're at the end game, you most likely will need to play this level all the time. So having this time restricted, like eliminated, it's very helpful to make people play the level. Specifically now that we're going to be able to like change characters at the fly, so it will make it much more faster. So yeah, I personally did enjoy this update overall. Let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed this 
update as well. Did you guys expect something a little more from it? Maybe you also enjoyed this or even if you're hyped because character select. As a bonus, feel free to put in the comments if you guys like the character balance that we saw here. Maybe if you're happy with the way your main is acting or you wish they, they added something more. Personally, as the analysis main, by just reading this, I'd say I'm kind of satisfied really. There's a lot of things in here that I really think she needed changes. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. If you guys like Grand Chase and would like to see more content of it in the future, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We're doing Grand Chase content here at least once a week. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Stay awesome. Stay safe. Have a great farm section today. And we see each other next time. Peace out.